Good afternoon, folks. It's Steve Ki Five J U F. Hope everyone's doing okay out there today. So this morning at breakfast, the guys we were talking about all the the recent uh, students that have been graduating from their uh, classes and passing their technician licenses, and it, it kind of took me back to when I was a ham in the beginning, and I can remember just getting my license and I got a radio, and I really didn't. You know, I was a CB guy, but I had never really worked on a repeater. And it was kind of in scary for me, and it took me a while to get comfortable with it. So what I thought I would do today is put together a video sharing with you some tips and things that I've learned to help you get on the repeater and kind of give you some guidelines or at least some ideas for, for having that QSO. So I thought, you know, this might be something useful because uh, it's kind of different when you're on a repeater because everyone can hear you. It, it's, 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 it's really different. So anyway, we'll get started. The video demonstrates how I've discovered working local two meter and 70 centimeter repeaters. Uh, you know, a good approach, a good approach is to just put your call sign out and listen. Uh, oftentimes, many people monitoring if they hear your call sign or if it's a new call sign, uh, they'll come back and talk to you. So that that's that's pretty cool. So you just passed your technician and you're ready to get on the air. Not sure how to start a QSO. General operating practices I find work well. And you know, your QRZ page and remembering call signs. So these are all some of the little challenges that I had, but I thought I would share with you kind of my journey and how I overcame some of these. Some of the challenges are uh, programming the radio correctly, frequency, tone, shift, and uh, a good resource is repeaterbook.com. Uh, I have a lot of videos that I've made on my YouTube channel that show you how to program an FT991A uh, that takes you through the programming process. Uh, I've linked some of the videos below in the description of this video. Uh, so it might give you some ideas of how to handle you know, what they call repeater offset, uh, tone only repeaters, CTCSS repeaters, uh, and so forth. And it, it goes over programming the radio, so it, it, it kind of gives you some, some background. Um, ac accessing the repeater, since you're transmitting and the repeater is rebroadcasting your signal, one of the things I find is I call it the three second rule. And that is I key up for three seconds and then I talk slow and wait three seconds after you're done speaking and release the microphone or the key. And this allows the repeater to pick up and recomplete your transmission uh, without being chopped off at the beginning or the end of the transmission. And most importantly, learn to speak comfortably, such as if you're uh, in the same room with the other person having a cup of coffee. <clears throat> That's kind of important because you're you're you've got this microphone and you're talking and you don't have any other information about that person what they look like where they're at uh anything so you you just kind of have to imagine um you, you're meeting someone for the first time over a cup of coffee and 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 that's just kind of to put put yourself at, at at ease or relax yourself so what i did i put together a little QSO of what i might handle a QSO. So I, I just thought it would be kind of give you an idea. Everything in yellow is uh, something I would say. And then the person in blue, for example, Joe, this is what he might say. So let, let's go through it real quick here. What I would do first is I would say, hey, this is, um, you know, this is KI5, JUF listening or monitoring. Wait and wait, um, you know, a minute or two. Uh, if no one comes back to you, there's probably no, no one on the repeater. So there's probably no need to keep calling, um, you know, wait 15, 20 minutes. If someone hears you, for example, uh, you make the call, this is KI5, JUF, listening and monitoring. Uh, the other person might say, uh, good afternoon, KI5, JUF, this is Whiskey One, X-Ray, X-Ray, X-Ray. The name here is Joe, and I'm located in Tuscola. How are you doing this afternoon? What I would come back with, for example, is good afternoon, Whiskey One, X-Ray, X-Ray, X-Ray from KI5, JUF. Uh, the name here is Steve, and I'm currently here in Abilene, Texas. Just got my ham technician ticket, and now I'm excited to get on the air. That's a good thing to say because when they hear that, they're going to talk to you. They might come back and say, very good, Steve, KI5JUF, on just getting your technician license. Welcome to the hobby, and I'm glad to see new hams joining us old timers. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of the guys, you know, they're like new blood. You know, they're excited, you know, like cool, you know, very good. So that's, 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 that's cool. 
uh, I would come back and say, uh, very good, Joe. I appreciate that, and I'm looking forward to getting more involved in the local clubs and events. And uh, tell me tell me about your two-meter radio and antenna setup. You know, just something to keep the conversation going. And Joe would come back, sure, Steve, the radio I have is an FTM 400D Yesu, and my antenna is a Comet GP3 located on my chimney about 25 feet up in the air. That's so just, you know, a back and forth. You can come back and say, or I would say, very good, Joe, your, your station is full quieting into the repeater and your audio is great. My station is an FT991A on a Comet GP9, about 45 feet up in the air with 35 watts. So a turn I use there, full quieting. Uh, let me explain what to you what that quick quickly means is, if you're if someone's transmitting into the repeater and you're hearing them quietly, that means their signal is strong getting into the repeater. That's the term we call full quieting, and that's a compliment. So if you've got a nice, good sounding station on the other end, full quieting is a very, very nice compliment to pay that other station. Uh, the other station might come back and say, very good, Steve, you're also doing a great job into the repeater and your audio sounds great. Um, at this point, you might want to close the QSO because sometimes guys are busy, so you know, you just you know, you can close it out if you want to. Uh, a typical way you might want to close it out is very good, Joe. I want to thank you for coming back to me this afternoon. It was a great pleasure uh, to make the acquaintance for now. I'll say 73, sir, and uh, Whiskey 1 X-ray, X-ray, X-ray from KI5JUF. Thanks, and I'll be clear. And typically, he'll come back and say, very good, Steve. 73, it was nice to meet you. Uh, welcome again to the hobby. So that's just to kind of give you an idea how you might do a QSO or just, you know, kind of play around with it. it that's how I would recommend doing something uh, just short and, and, and get you, and like I said, it gets you practice. That's the most important thing. You've got to practice doing this. The more QSOs you make, uh, it, it's going to get easier. Uh, things I work well, the three second key up and key down rule, you know, key up three seconds, talk, and then when you're done talking, hold the mic for three or the key for three seconds and then release it. Um, you know, maybe two seconds. I like the three second rule because it gives the repeater time to kick in and, 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 and get synced with your radio. So just something I find. Always verify the other station's call sign uh, before wrapping up the QSO. Uh, mention, um, you know, you can mention any upcoming related events that you might have seen, and this might generate discussion. Uh, if you're part of a class, or get all the names and phone numbers of the other students and keep in touch, uh, Facebook pages, whatever. And another thing, when testing, get to know other folks before the test starts and after. Ask if there are any social media pages that are area club members post, such as Saturday night simplex or repeater events. And something I'm going to do here in the area, I'm going to start hosting uh, uh, maybe a Saturday afternoon repeater event where we'll pick the 146960 repeater and say from three to four, uh, I'll get on the air. And, and if anybody wants to come back and talk on the repeater, I'll just I'll be available, just kind of give folks the, the practice, because I know what it feels like, so I can kind of help people bring them along and make them feel comfortable, and that's important, and most of your uh, hams will extend that courtesy to you. They will make you feel welcome, and they'll try to help you. Uh, one thing, uh, if you have a QRZ page, I have some other videos on QRZ pages. I didn't want to load this uh, presentation up too much, but if you have a QRZ page, go ahead and update it. Get some pictures on there, and uh, I'll put a link to my QRZ page also. Uh, it kind of gives you some ideas. QRZ page, I've got pictures and things, and this is, you know, I'll put the link to my QRZ page in the, in the uh, description, so you can go back and check it out. These are just some other pictures. So remember, uh, write down the call sign uh, uh, associated with the name. Make notes of what you discuss with this person and a little bit about the radio and antenna setup. Uh, if you can meet the other person at a club, event, or coffee, this will help you associate uh, they, it should be the call sign with the face and things that you can learn about the other person. And lastly, don't worry, uh, it will come in time. It's a little like Morse code. Uh, you know, the call signs become like music. And I'll tell you, when you first do the call signs, you're not going to remember any of them. But don't worry, eventually they will start coming to you. And there's guys like 
David, Mike, and Gerald, all these guys, I know their call signs. When I say their first name, I know their call sign. It's, it's in my brain, so I can immediately say uh, Steve, KG5QH. You know, that that's that's going to come with time, so don't worry about it if you can't remember. Uh, but the important thing is go to club events, get to meet these people face-to-face, -face, and that's how you're going to start to make that association. It will come with time, trust me, because I thought I was just going to – I was always writing stuff down, never could keep up, and I was like, oh, God, I'll never remember these people. But it, it will happen. It will come. Lastly, uh, get on the air. The more people you hear, uh, you will start to remember their call signs. Update your QRZ page. Get involved with local clubs. These, these are just important things. I'm going to make another video on some actual QSOs that I'll record. Uh, I don't have any right now ready, but I'll put up another video later. And I'll demonstrate uh, how to do a couple of uh, QSOs on the local repeater here. And uh, it'll kind of give you an idea of, of, of how that uh, conversation would go. So anyway, I hope this helps. And uh, I was kind of inspired to do this this morning because they were talking about all the students that graduated. And I thought, you know what? I've been a new student and I've been there and I know what it feels like and not everybody can just get on the air. It takes a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of skill and some practice and uh, you know just just takes practice. So anyway, I'll wrap this video up. Thanks again for watching and uh, 73 from Steve Cal5JUF. Thanks again for watching.